So we have finished up chapter two, which is using R as a calculator. And now we're moving on to chapter three, where we can actually take some of those calculated values and put them into objects. And chapter three is titled Simple Objects. And as you can see, I cleared out the uh, lower left screen here, left it big, because that's where most of the action is going to be um, today. And uh, here are a couple notes on simple objects. If you have worked with other computer languages, you will know of these, of these objects as what are known as variables. That is typically what they are called in other languages. In R, object names are case sensitive. In addition, object names begin with a letter. Object names consist of four different things. First of all, letters. Uh, second of all, numbers. Third, periods. And fourth, they can consist of underscores. And that is the shift dash that's just to the right of the zero on your keyboard. You want to choose meaningful object names. This makes your code a lot easier to read, both by yourself and by others. And then there is the assignment operator. Even though it in the book it says equals and this little fake arrow that we have consisting of a less than and a dash are equivalent. There's slight differences between them, but for the uh, purposes of what we're doing here, they'll be considered equivalent. I'm generally going to be favoring the equals because it's a single keystroke for one. And then second of all, if you use the assignment operator, which is a less than followed by a dash, if you accidentally put a space between the less than and the dash, you can run into all kinds of problems and they're very tricky bugs to uh, find. If you type an object name at the prompt, you will find out what's in that object. So we will do that. And finally, the last thing, if you type in ls with uh, open parenthesis and closed parenthesis, or objects with an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis, That'll display all of the object names that are currently in your uh, R session. Now, the LS is going to be familiar to people who know either Unix or Linux because LS is the command that displays all of the files in the current working directory. Well, LS, when it's used here, will display the names of all of the objects which have been created in this session or drawn in from a previous session. So at this point, we're going to get started and getting a prompt. There we go. To, to start with a simple example, I'm just going to assign x to be 7. Now, at this point, and this will be for our studio only, the, nothing would happen in uh, just raw R, but if you're using uh, our studio, X gets set to 7 over here, and then up here in what is known as the Environment tab, in the upper right, you can see the X value is assumed to have the value 7. So you can see that uh, this is a very handy um, way of seeing what's in particular objects as you go. So let's set something else. Oh, one more thing. Down here in the uh, lower left, if I type X at this point, it'll say X has the value 7. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the uh, object Y to 12. And it silently sets it to 12. But up here in the upper right, it says now there's a second object. It's Y, and it has the value 12. And if I type Y, you'll see it'll tw be 12 down below. Now to show you the other type of assignment operator, I can type in the uh, arrow there, the arrow that points from left to right. And when you do that, you can say z is equal to 2.2. And you can see up here, now we have a object z that is set equal to 2.2. And again, if I type z, I get 2.2. Now here are a couple things that you can do. You can at this point say x is equal to x plus 1. Now, a little bit of background on why they have the two different assignment operators. This equals right here, 
the mathematicians don't like that because you're really not saying x is equal to x plus 1. That's an equation that has no solution. What you're really saying is take the value on the right-hand side of this assignment operator, which in this case is x plus 1, and insert that into x. That's what's really being done here. So let me go ahead and hit return. And when I do, you'll notice up here in the upper right, x just changed its value from 7 to 8. Again, I can type x, and it'll let you know that it has the value 8. So there are other things that you can do. Instead of changing a variable, you can just display what's the value of x plus y. Well, if x now has the value 8 and y has the value 12, if you add them, you get 20. You can take x times y, and 8 times 12 is 96. You could even raise x to the y power, and you're going to see that's a big number, raising 8 to the 20th power, but there it is. Now at this time, if I type ls, open, close, and again I could have typed uh, objects, open, close, and I hit return, what I'm going to do is it's going to show me that the three objects that I have created, and that's consistent with what we have over here in the upper right window, are x, y, and z. Next command is, if I want to get rid of one of these objects, or maybe even two of them, let's say I want to get rid of the objects y and z. Now, if you look up in the upper right, y and z are gone. And if I hit up arrow twice to get the ls command again, it'll say the only object that I have in this particular R session is x at this point. Now, in addition to the ls command, you might feel more comfortable doing the objects command. It does exactly the same thing. And there you have it, x. Now, finally, I'm going to quit out of this R session. And when I quit out, I have to decide if I want to take x and remember it for my next R session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in quit. I'm sorry, quit is done by Q open close. And it's going to ask me a question. It's going to say, do you want to save the workspace image to a particular file? And I have yes, no, and continue. And continue will just get me back into R. So I really do want to quit here. And so if I type yes, it will save that object X for my next session. So since I don't care to save X, I'm going to put in an N for no. And I will quit R at that point. I'm back out of our studio now. And that finishes off simple objects. The next topic that follows simple objects will be vectors. And these are just a generalization of the simple objects we've encountered here.